AM 650 KGAB, Cheyenne's number one news talk radio station. On the phone, I have Marion Smith or Marion, of course, known as the former mayor of Cheyenne, but what she's doing with us today, she is the uh, new, uh, she's the CEO of American Crypto Fed, which is a new DAO. Good morning, Marion. Good morning. It's good to speak with you again. So Hello. what what exactly is a DAO? I'm not sure people understand that. Yeah, it's um, a DAO stands for a Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And uh, it's what it is is it's a form of LLC, which is a limited liability corporation. And um, it's a way of forming an, an organization or a corporation, in our case, um, that is uh, it's done through the use of blockchain technology and uh, through that um, participants in the organization can make um, consensual decisions without really having a, a governing body if you will that that comes in and, and votes and oversees everything it's um, it's, it's used throughout the, the all of the organizational um, members have voting rights if you will and unlike kind of your, your current um, business uh, organizations, if you think that they probably have you know, annual meetings and changes to the bylaws and, and having to get together to, to cast votes, this is done very quickly and allows for, um, again, greater government through, uh, through everybody that's, that's a participant and also um, a large savings both in, in time and cost for organizations. And it's, uh, it's a brand new, um, as I mentioned, it's a brand new organizational structure within the state of Wyoming, Secretary of State's office. And it's legislation that um, our Wyoming state lawmakers have been looking at for several uh, years. And Wyoming, much like we were in the 1970s, the very first state to recognize limited liability companies, Wyoming is now the first state in the entire nation to recognize these DAOs, or decentralized autonomous organizations. So, Marion, this obviously is not my area of expertise, but as a layman, it sounds like, I don't know if this is the right term, uh, a corporate direct democracy. Would that be a fair characterization? Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good way to, um, to describe it, Doug. It's, it, it really is. It really takes, um, it, it decentralizes. It takes the power away from um, any one you know, entity, any kind of corporate entity, in fact, I, I think we kind of made it clear in, in, in the press release that ideally I, I won't even be CEO because there shouldn't be a CEO of a DAO going forward, but somebody has to file the paperwork and, and organize, organize um, the organization. And then um, once there are uh, members within the organization, it's, uh, all of the voting is, is spread a, a, across the, the organization. So, at some point, does your title as CEO, do, do you go away, or, or is that permanent, or how does that work? Yeah, at some point, I, I, the title goes away, and I'm just a, a member of the organization, like anybody else is, is a member of the organization. Okay, now, as the, as the name uh, kind of implies, it's cryptocurrency. Again, I'm not sure everybody grasps the concept. It's, it's a term that's still a little new to some people. Right. Uh, explain um, that to us, if you would. Sure. So, uh, cryptocurrency, is, uh, certainly it's, it's emerging. It's, it's been around for a while. Bitcoin, um, people certainly have been hearing about you know, Bitcoin and now Dogecoins and um, you know, different exchanges that are out there um, within the markets. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how ours is, is different, but when people think of cryptocurrency, they typically think about, um, you know, Bitcoin and how that really fluctuates in, in the markets. Um, and there's a lot of question as far as, you know, really real world, everyday practicality use of cryptocurrency. Um, even the federal government is taking a look at uh, making even our, our U.S. dollar uh, digital, if you will. Um, the, uh, the pandemic in COVID certainly brought a lot of this to light when um, businesses, at, at one point, some businesses weren't accepting actual physical money. You had to use um, your a credit card or a debit card or some digital form of payment, if you will. Um, and so uh, the federal government is looking at, um, you know, possibly taking our, our U.S. dollar and making that digital. but. But cryptocurrency is um, again a really emerging, uh, emerging technology, and it's uh, it's actually a lot more fraud resistant um, than than what people would think too, because of the blockchain technology and uh, 
that again the, the technology that's that's behind it that really allows um, for uh, you know anti money laundering and knowing really who the customers uh, are that that you're that you're working with and and you think about too it, it's just our U.S. dollar and how um, how often that is you know counterfeited at, around the world so. Uh, cryptocurrency is definitely uh, an emergent technology, and um, and we uh, will be launching into that into that space here um, in in the future as well. Now, how how is this company going to make money? I mean, what what where's the profit here? Well, it, it's it, it's interesting in that it's not so much about profitability. What we are really trying to do is create um, a new currency that is uh, used wild, wildly through. Um, the the merchants and consumers and and the mission, unlike what we're experiencing with our our U.S. dollar and uh, the devaluation of it, is that um, the mission of of what we will be launching is uh, a new monetary currency that has zero inflation and zero deflation and is really quite stable and um, and then again used. Um, from uh, from the merchant to uh, consumers, um, peer to peer transactions, uh, but again, really targeting that zero inflation and, and zero deflation, and then uh, really what um, the the ultimate goal is too is a huge savings for um, for merchants. And when I, every time uh, I go down you know downtown Main Street. Um, Use my, you know, debit card or credit card. The merchants have to pay a fee to to accept my money, and with this uh, new monetary payment system, there will be no transaction fees for for merchants. Now, when you say it's digital, and, and Mary, and this is all new to me, so you're going to have to, if I'm off, you're going to have to help me here. Um, I'm sort of assuming then that there would be no paper or coins. You would just br- break out your phone and do a digital transaction. Is that how that would work? Yes, absolutely. And so uh, the way that it, um, the way essentially that it would work is I would go to a participating bank and um, through uh, becoming a customer of that bank they know who i am they um so that's the whole anti-money laundering or aml and then um kyc compliant is know your customer so uh, individuals are then um recognized to the bank and essentially what i can do is transfer um i can download a, a, a digital wallet onto my phone and i can transfer funds from my bank in u.s dollars to uh, the currency which we are calling the Ducats and then that's available in a wallet and I can go to a participating merchant or um, hot dog stand or you know a Friday on the plaza and pull up my QR code and exchange uh, fees and that the cost if you will for, for the transaction um, that way and uh, what's beautiful is that I actually get rewards back for um, a transaction I make and then whoever I'm doing business with they get that money instantaneously in their wallet as well they can exchange it for US dollars or they can keep it in Ducat and they're not charged a transaction fee um, for that uh, for that um, transaction if you will that, that occurred now a couple of questions here um, for foreign travel, would you still have to get a currency exchange, or would this be recognized internationally, ideally? Well, ideally, it'll be recognized internationally, but that's we're, we're a ways off from that. We're, we're um, certainly starting off uh, here in Wyoming, and uh, also um, with states that are also looking at um, adopting, if they haven't already, uh, the kind of uh, legislation that, that we have introduced. They don't necessarily have to recognize DAOs, but... Uh, several mayors across the country have expressed really an interest in um, taking their communities and uh, their municipalities into the cryptocurrency um, dynamic. And what what are the advantage of advantages of that for a governmental entity? Well, for governmental entities, um, with with what we are uh, with what we're going to be rolling out, 
again, the governmental agencies, much like um, our merchants, I, and I experienced this um, with the city of Cheyenne, we spend a lot of money on those transaction fees. Uh, right. So every time a business permit is, is pulled and a business owner wants to use their, um, their credit card or debit card, that comes out of somebody's wallet, and usually it's the city's, or it's passed on to the consumer. And what, um, what this system will allow then is for those transactions to take place instantaneously, but without those transaction fees, because there's, there's no need to, because of the automation and the blockchain technology, there is no reason to charge a transaction fee because it's, there's, there's no cost involved. So it's sort of like a, like a credit card without the transaction fees. That's a, that's, that's absolutely one way to look at it. Yeah. But, but the, but without having, um, the debts, if you will, uh, or interest rates being, um, having to be charged. Absolutely. Okay. I'm speaking with, uh, Marion Smith or CEO of American uh, crypto fed. Uh, we're talking about, uh, first of all, a new form of govern, a uh, new form of uh, corporate entity called a DAO. This is something that was approved in the legislature just earlier this session. And we're going beyond that and talking about cryptocurrency. Now, I believe in the release I read and you mentioned the Ducat, I believe there's also going to be a lock issued. Is that correct? Yeah, so we are going to have um, two tokens. So the Ducat is uh, a token designed for daily transactions, and it has a store of value, and again, protecting its price from fluctuations against the dollar. And um, the market price is, is managed uh, to be really close to um, a target exchange rate. And again, that's done through great technology, machine learning, and um, and then a linear control theory that really is able to keep everything stable um, versus, you know, the fluctuations that we certainly see um, in, 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 in our case with the U.S. dollar, um, the devaluation of it. And then the other token is a, what's referred to as a governance token. And that is, um, it's one that we're calling LOCK. We've named it Locke after um, John Locke, and uh, certainly going with the principles of um, the you know the, the Declaration of Independence and, and monetary independence. And that token is designed to be um, the stability for the Ducat. So essentially, um, that is the the token that we use to uh, base the supply of um, and, and keep that control within uh, the Ducat. So with the Ducat, there will be unlimited um, tokens available, and the lock will be uh, limited to uh, 10 trillion uh, lock tokens when it's, when it's launched. When will this all be up and running, if we know? Well, we are really, uh, we're a few months out. We are working um, definitely to be uh, compliant within um, the Securities Exchange Commission. There have been, of course, uh, you know, in the news, lots of talk as far as regulation. We want to make sure that we are fully federally um, in compliance and uh, specifically with um, what's referred to as a Safe Harbor 2.0 proposal within um, the Securities Exchange Commission. Uh, Commissioner Hester Pierce has, um, has um, that proposal out there. And so we're, you know, making sure that we are um, federally regulated and uh, with compliance. And that, of course, takes a little bit of time, but we're hoping uh, here with uh, before the end of the year. And, um, and I'll just say this as far as, you know, Wyoming and being the first, uh, news got out. And Wyoming's been making international news with this. We, we really underestimated um, the amount of... of excitement that this would generate and there have been literally hundreds of different stories written and translated uh, across the world about this new organization and I've been reached out to versus uh, via different social media platforms with companies now looking at wanting to uh, move their headquarters to Wyoming under this new um, under this new uh, organizational business structure that that we have so we've really gained um, some international attention. We've got uh, lots of people wondering when they can, um, you know, purchase uh, the the coins, and and we're, we'll be sure to let everybody know when when that happens. 
Okay, I'm speaking with uh, Marion Smith, or CEO of American Crypto Fed. We're talking about cryptocurrency and uh, the uh, new decentralized autonomous organization of which, uh, my understanding is this company is the first of its kind in the world in that regard. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, we've we been working, certainly, with members of the legislature. Uh, we've got a local um, uh, attorney here in town, Matt Kaufman, has been fantastic. He's with uh, Hathaway and Kuntz Law Firm, and um, at, at midnight on July 1st, uh, he was up and, and filing our paperwork uh, in the Secretary of State's office, and we heard back from Secretary of State uh, Buchanan's office at 12.11 a.m. On, on July 1st that our organization was the, the first to register, and it certainly probably wasn't the last on, on that day and won't be the last going going forward. There's a lot of interest in um, in this new form of limited liability corporations. Okay, and we are taking calls, 632-3323. I would ask that you stick to the subject of American Crypto Fed and the new DAO. Marion, does this present any particular regulatory challenges as opposed to traditional currency? Does the government have to deal with things they wouldn't have to deal with otherwise? No, actually, it's it's less regulated, if, if you will, as far as what we think of as, as government. It's, it's governed by... It's governed by the participants in the program, and that's, uh, you know, if, if we think about even our, our own system of, of government, wouldn't it be great if, if we probably had a lot more say in, in some of the decision-making that, that that happens, and with this new organization, that's uh, that's how it's, how it's governed. Now, I'm sure at some point you'd like to expand beyond the borders of Wyoming. Is there any legislation pending in other states to allow for that? Well, yes. Um, I believe that Arizona and possibly Utah have uh, really taken um, Wyoming's uh, legislation and, and pretty much mirrored it. Um, but what's great about this is we actually don't have to have full legislation by other states to, to carry it forward. It's something that um, what we're going to be doing is working directly with banks that um, are able to uh, host our wallet, if, if you will. We have... Um, Banks are interested in, in talking with us and, and partnering with us. And then we've also been really engaged in working with um, an organization called the Merchants Advisory Group, or the MAG. And that group is an organization of approximately 170 of the largest um, retailers in the country, if you will. So think about you know all of your, um, your, your grocery store names, your big box names, and then working along too with reaching out to organizations like our Downtown Development Authority and Chambers of Commerce and getting merchants involved in the conversation of what it would look like for them to receive this form of currency and be able to um, conduct business uh, with it as well. So it's there's a lot of work to be done over the, over the next few months and, and uh, certainly years. There is, uh, within the Securities Exchange Commission in this particular proposal, there's a, a three-year um, pilot kind of, if, if you will. And so this is, uh, this is something that's um, going to take a lot of work to certainly get launched, but it's, it's growing. And we certainly have mayors from around the country that, um, that are interested as well. Now, let, let's assume I wanted to spend some of these uh, Ducats. Would I go to my bank and open up a special account? Would I go online? Uh, what would I need to do? Yeah, ideally you would just be able to go online and um, let them know that you want to open up and download um, a new wallet onto your um, smartphone and then make that exchange very seamlessly as uh Many of us probably, um, you know, use Venmo or something kind of similar to transfer funds back and forth, something very similar to that. And then, um, so that, that transaction then, yes, would happen um, from your bank and then into your digital wallet on your smartphone. And then, uh, ideally, you could, you know, go down to um, Fridays on the Plaza or another event and pull up your, uh, pull up your smartphone and the QR code and make that purchase and then actually receive um, Ducats back, or rewards back into your wallet for using that purchase and then no cost to the merchant on the other end for, for that transaction fee. Would there be any concern about hackers getting in and stealing money or counterfeiting money or anything like that? 
No, and that again is the that's the beauty of the blockchain technology. It's much more um, it's much more safe than our traditional uh, way of of doing business, if, if you will, with with the banks and 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 hacking accounts. And then again, uh, just the U.S. dollar and and forgeries um, in in general. Okay, I'm speaking with uh, Marion Smith, or we're talking about American Crypto Fed, uh, which is a DAO, a, a form of uh, corporate entity, which actually was just approved in our legislature last year. Uh, Marion, was was that bill written specifically uh, at the behest of American Crypto Fed, or did you jump on the uh, opportunity once it was there? It's the latter. We jumped on the opportunity once it was there. Um, the uh, our organization was actually um, registered as a in, as a corporate entity prior to um, this, the July first. We were registered with the Secretary of State's office as a just a general corporate filing, and so we switched over and um, made some adjustments uh, to our organizational structure and and switched over. So um, we didn't need this structure to get up and running, but it certainly we believe is. Um, it's it's a better way of of really conducting uh, governance, if you will, by all of the people, by the people and for the people of of the organization. How much um, hesitance, if any, are you running into people because this is just such a new concept? Really, we haven't we haven't run into um, hesitancy because even the merchants that we speak with and we've um, we've actually. Uh, been in contact and, and have been part of different forums within the Merchants Advisory Group. Uh, we've we've done webinars. Um, we are we've got speaking engagements at their um, annual conference in, in September in, in Florida. Merchants really know that digital currency, digital forms of payment, are it's it's coming. If if not even here, um, and again, it, we really what really amplified, if you will, the, the need for it was certainly the, the coronavirus and people not taking physical money so much anymore. And so uh, what we're hearing um, not only across the nation with the merchants and the excitement of not having to uh, spend those transaction fees um, that really cost businesses a lot of money. And, and we know that, you know, the margin profitabilities are, are slim. And so the merchants are really excited about it. And what we're hearing, even internationally, is the need for a monetary system that is zero inflation and zero deflation, and one that is um, not susceptible to the the whims, if you will, of, of governments. And the only way to do that is through this, this autonomous organizational kind of structure that really takes... Um, machine learning and and mathematical formulas and on a monthly and quarterly basis gauges where the spending is is uh, how consumer spending is is going and and can adjust so that it really is is truly a stable a stable economy a stable token without um, the devaluation that our u.s dollar has this is a little bit philosophical and perhaps slightly far afield, but I'll ask anyway. Uh, is this going to lead to a cashless society at some point? Oh, um, you know, I don't know that we will completely ever get away from cashless. Uh, certainly not completely away from the, the U.S. dollar, but, you know, I, it, counterfeiting is a big deal. And it, it, I, I do see us possibly getting away from cashless, but it, it will certainly take... It'll certainly take some time. Marion, why did you get involved with this? Well, I, I, it's, it, I was really thrilled to be asked. Um, before the end of the year, uh, shortly after um, the election, uh, Representative, some of you all might remember, um, Representative Tyler Lindholm was very right. active yes. in uh, actually the, the blockchain committee and, and getting this legislation and other legislation going forward. He was the previous CEO, and he went to work for... Um, Senator Cynthia Lummis when she was elected, and I met the um, the folks, the team that I am a part of, uh, a couple of years ago in um, a legislative hearing when I was uh, actually testifying as as mayor about um, 
how fantastic blockchain can be for uh, even communities such as, as Cheyenne in, in being able to um, keep records safe and secure um, and, and basically out of file cabinets. And so I met this team um, back in 2018, and the opportunity arose when uh, Tyler Lindholm went to work for Senator Cynthia Lummis, and they asked me to step in, and I started the, the day after I left office. So I've, um, it's, it's certainly new and exciting, and I'm, I'm really excited for uh, not only this opportunity, but for Wyoming, again, to be um, first on the map and, and really the international recognition that the state's getting for uh, the work that's been done by our legislature. Okay, I'd like to thank my guest. We've been speaking with Marion Smith. Or Marion, is there a website people could go to to learn more? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, www.americancryptofed.org. Thanks, Marion. I appreciate it. Have a great day, Doug. Talk to you later.